You want to know what's the worst thing about trying to do a video at like 8 o'clock in the evening? Actually probably closer to 9 and you live out in the country? Mosquitoes. <laughs> they are ruthless. So I've been getting a number of uh, questions about like targeting pike, walleye, stuff like that on the on the fly. Today we're gonna go over um, three different setups that I use uh, with my fly rods, and go over a pike leader that I like to use, and different types of pike leaders that you can use depending on your circumstances. But first, let's go over the fly rods. So your first setup that I, that you, your general setup that most people would have, we'll go over your three different types of fly line that you can use as well in the different circumstances you would use them in. Um, so this is just my five, six weight. Um, it, this is a, an echo base. I really like this rod. Comes in at about $130. I think they're up a little bit now, more like 140 but very solid rod, feels great, works nice. And I just have a 5.6 reel with a half decent uh, Fluger with a, um, it's got a pretty decent drag on it. Um, this is a floating line, which you would use mainly for your, say more like top water bites and uh, something where you don't really need your line or your leader to go very deep. Now you can always put on a fair, like about a nine foot leader if you wish. Actually, we will go over that very shortly about what types of leaders you can use. So this is the floating line, which works well. Now with my floating line in this setup, I was just recently did a canoe trip down the North Saskatchewan River. So in this case, I was using an indicator setup with uh, a fairly long actual lot leader on it I think it's my leader is probably somewhere in the vicinity of like 10 10 to 12 feet which is fairly long to cast if you're not used to it uh, your general leader would roughly be about nine feet ish but some of the holes that we were fishing on the river were like 12 to 15 feet which is usually the wintering holes where the where the water is low currently, that's where most of the fish are holding. So I was running this setup through. So basically all I was running was I have a balanced leech on this with a, um, a stone fly pattern. And it was working pretty good. I actually didn't, um, we actually, I actually caught a pretty, or uh, reasonably sized gold eye on it and not on this particular setup but on my eight weight I did it wasn't it worked out pretty good but this is just like any nymphing rig cast it out like you'd be nymphing for trout or anything like that believe it or not but I just using like a leech pattern as well because walleye can be predators and the, I actually I got more pike on that and I got a pike on this yesterday which was pretty cool now the pound test that i was using with this is i think i have a 1x at about five feet and then on tied onto that i have another piece of um 3x tied at about i think roughly about five feet of that so I got about 10 to 11 feet, that, that's give or take a little bit, but it, this is a nine foot rod and it's well past this. So that's the set, one of the setups that I like to use and uh, believe it or not, you can 
it is very easy, even on lakes, to uh, indicator fish for walleye and pike, just like you would trout. It works, and it's actually pretty effective, especially on a good walleye chop day. If you're getting in that 10 to 15 foot range and you're just trying to keep it off the bottom, you can set the indicator at the right length, keep it about a foot off the bottom and see which one they hit. Uh, usually you would throw maybe two, two different streamers on there, but they will hit bugs too, believe it or not. That's the first setup. <clears throat> so the second setup is a medium sink line. I think this is a, it's got a sink tip on a floating line. Well, sorry, the end of the lot, the end of, so this is a medium sink line. So the tip of this line is a sink tip, which I think it is roughly about a three inch per second me, uh, sink rate. <clears throat> so um, I also have a floating line for this. This is my eight weight. Um, this, is, this is my other eight weight. So I have another uh, floating line just for this that I have a, a reel that I can change this out when I want to target more when I want to target like more consistent pike, bigger pike in the shallows, like early in the morning. Um, all I'm using for this, and you don't need much, um, when you're using a full sink line, or a, sorry, a half sink line, the reason I would use a half sink line is if I want to, if I want it to slowly go down and hit the bottom, and then all I do, and, I, and if I don't want my, my fly, or my fly, <laughs> Uh, my streamer um, if I don't want the streamer to hit bottom what I what I will do is I will use my medium sink line give it the amount of time it needs depending on if you're in 10 feet of water or 8 feet of water give it let it get close to the bottom and then you can really slowly retrieve so on those cold days when the water temps aren't very high and the fish are, aren't really biting very hard and you don't need to pull it aggressively. I will use a medium sink line, works really well. You can get that nice slow presentation, just strip it, strip it, give it a sec, twitch it, strip it. Um, just slowly feathering it, feathering it in with your, like just slowly pulling it in a little bit, little bit, twitch it with your rod. Pull it in, twitch it with your rod. Works really well. Um, great setup. Uh, I've caught quite a few fish on it. Um, what I'm using for a leader on this, um, I have a piece of foot and a half, 25 pound test fluorocarbon. So, and uh, actually, so right here you can see I have a 25 pound test fluorocarbon. Right here, can I get the focus? Focus, focus on me. Um, you can see I have a leader, uh, a 30 pound wire leader. Now this is knottable wire. Okay, so this is a 30 pound wire leader. Now this is knottable, which works really nice for tying your own leaders when you're out on the water. Um, I just pre-make a few and then all I do is I tie a loop knot on the end so I can have a loop to loop connection on the end of my leader. You can even do it where you tie it. You could do like a, I mean, a foot long piece onto the end of your uh, your fly line. Now for for when you're fishing, you're fishing for pike and even walleye, you don't need a long leader. Pike and walleye often are not that leader shy. They are finicky sometimes, and that's why I have the 25 pound test fluorocarbon. You can even go up a little higher, maybe do 30, 35, if you're really targeting bigger pike in the area or there's a chance with that bigger pike. Because I have had many times, if you don't hook it right the corner of the mouth, they just, they, they will snap it off. And this is fairly, the nice thing about fluorocarbon is it's fairly abrasive resistant, but it doesn't always, doesn't always work. Um, you get bit off lots, and sometimes you need to risk it for the biscuit. Um, the lead wire leader is definitely a good 
like your sure shot that you're not going to get bit off. The only problem with that is there are times when the pike can be fairly finicky, even the walleye. I will find often I will have more hits with the fluorocarbon than I will with the wire leader. But if you've got a nice warm day, it's not gonna matter. Those fish are gonna be fired up and you could throw cheesies and you still get bit. It doesn't make a difference. But on those cold days, sometimes you have to minus the wire leader in order to get those bites. The only thing is then you're risking the fact that you get bit off. But if you're using 25 pound test, there's not an often you're gonna break off. You're gonna get bit off. So that's my second setup. So for more deep lake fishing, when you're trying to get those 20 foot range, 20 foot range, the other setup would be more like a 10, about 10 feet maybe. You could go pretty deep, but you just gotta wait. But for a, what do we got here? Who are you, pup? Huh, we got dogs. So for my third setup, that I usually bring with me. This, this is a full sink line. All of this sinks. There's no floating in it. She just drops. It's aggressive. It's a seven inch per second line and it drops really nicely. I like to use this mainly for lake fishing. Now, the method I prefer to use most of the time when I'm on the lake fishing is once again, I'm using a foot to foot and a half. I usually go foot and a half because then after time, a couple times, if you haven't figured out what they're biting on, you, you be closer to a foot, but foot and a half seems to be a fairly good distance so that when you cast out, the line, you let the line sink. This is a seven inch per second line, so count down. If you got 20 feet, figure out how many inches you got and count down. Um, I think it works out roughly to be about uh, what's that, 20 feet, um, 120. Yeah, I think it works out, it's close to like a minute almost. So you just cast it out, let it sit, give yourself about a minute, and then slowly start stripping it. The nice thing about having the foot and a half leader is when you strip, your line will come up, right? So your, your fly will jig and you get that nice jigging motion that um, pike and walleye really like. Like when you're gear fishing, they really enjoy that, that, uh, that, uh, that jigging motion. Usually if you're using just a jig and a, and a swim bait or a grub with a twister tail on it, you're just popping it off the bottom, popping it off the bottom. The nice thing about this too is where it's a full sink line, if, you're, if your fish are fired up and you're looking for that more aggressive take, well, now you cast it out, let it all sink, and you can start stripping it in. Put it in here and just start coming in with it. Those are really fun bites because then they just, just, just like a spinning rod, they just take it and they run with it. Um, the walleye definitely will hit like that on the warm days, but on the cold days, the walleye, I found the only way I seem to really get them to hit with this is just that slow retrieve and slow, Low and slow is what I say. Works really well. Um, especially on rivers with uh, high current, um, a full sink line, the walleye and pike generally are gonna be on the bottom of the river. Um, they do suspend sometimes, but generally they're right on the edge of the seam, sitting on the bottom. And this will get you down to the very bottom. So if you don't want to have three different types of line, what other options do you have? Okay, so say for instance, you only have a floating line, which most, when you, most of you who go out and buy a fly rod, you will start off with a floating line. Now there are a lot of many different ways you can do it without getting a full sink line. I like having the three different setups because it's really nice to have. 
Um, you can set up three different rigs and you can just cast them and try different things till you figure out what's working. But if you don't have that and you only have one rod and you want to make it work, there is an option. Uh, let's see if I can find it. So this here, so this is what I have here. This is a uh, Commando five inch sink tip. So it is a pretty aggressive, it's not quite as aggressive as my, um, my full sink line, which is seven inches, but it will, it's actually more than my medium sink line. I think my medium's about a three inch per second. I don't remember, I haven't, I've had it for quite a while now. Um, but the thing with that, so where I put all my access leaders. Okay, so you can see this here. Now it's about a, we've got roughly, it's about a five foot length of a sink tip. And you just tie it on. So you have a loop here and you just do a loop to loop connection to your fly line. Um, works really nicely and it will get it down quite aggressively. It works quite well. I generally will use these on like some of the trout rivers like up in the mountains but this is a good option like it just means you the only difference between using this and using a full sink line is you might have to wait longer especially if you're on a lake but it will work you just have to wait that's all next thing you know you put a i have a non-slip loop knot right here loop to loop connection and then i have i think this is a 20 pound test ma mono and then basically you just, you know, tie your line on the end. I have about a two foot, which is fairly aggressive. Um, but the other way to get walleye is by having this and having it sit on the bottom. If you have mono, mono floats better. So if you have a non-weighted fly, fly streamer, I should say, um, you'll be sitting, you know, you can have a, a streamer to be sitting on the bottom and then this will be sitting up, keeping it off the bottom which generally you want to be about a foot off the bottom for walleye and pike anyway. So that is how you would get your, your floating line down to the bottom. Okay, so we've gone over the three, three rod setups that I prefer to use. You get your floating line, you got your medium sink line for a slow retrieve. Once it gets to the bottom, you can have that really nice slow retrieve so that it kind of stays in the bottom but doesn't hook bottom you'll get less snags. You got your full sink line when you need it to go deep and get it to that bottom and you got a good day and you can just pull it in. Or you have a high current in the area within which you are fishing. <clears throat> um, with the floating line, if you do want to get it down, there are sink tips available with pretty aggressive sinks, sink rates. Like this is a five inch. Um, there are one, I think there are ones with seven inch on there. Um, they're pretty pretty darn aggressive. The only difference is when you strip that floating line will pull it up every time Which isn't a bad thing. It's actually sometimes that might just be the retrieve that you need So it definitely could work and it's probably a really good place to start for someone with just one line <clears throat> It's a good way to like adjust it, but then the only thing is you're changing leaders and I like to be as efficient as possible on the water so I'm not spending too much time setting up especially when I'm fishing with my kids so um, let's talk about uh, the last little thing that that's my setups that I like to use and how I like to use them in the different ways I like to use them um, I would like to show you guys the last little thing to kind of go with all of this and how I how I like to do it is um, uh, what to do like so what you would typically use for pike fishing if you're a gear fisherman you would already really know this most people use wire leaders right so you could buy them which works nice but what i like to use just because it's a little more low profile just as as less flashy as possible so the pike doesn't really see it because the fly the this leader line if you look at it 
So if you're used to throwing um, braided line on a gear rod, if you, you look at it, it's pretty much the same color as, as the braided line. So it works pretty nicely. And if you gear fish, like you can catch them with braided line all the time, especially in murky water, they're never gonna see a difference. It's never gonna really matter. On clear water, it will matter. Sometimes. If they're, if they're fired up, it won't. If they're finicky, which I know a few lakes where they are finicky sometimes. You're going to use these. They are fast, come on, fast, basically fast attaching clips. They're not like the big ones that you would hook and clip in like for gear fishing. Um, I like these because they're very low profile. They don't look, they look pretty much like a part of the line. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you guys how I make my pike leaders. And you can make quite a few out of one spool. And it, with all that, it's you get quite a few for a fairly reasonable price. Like definitely cheaper than you would buy a bunch of pike leaders. But if you're lazy and you wanna buy pike leaders, pike leaders work too. You can just attach it to the end and that's fine. But I like doing this because I can attach it with a loop knot, which I will show you guys after. Some of you guys are gonna cringe on this because I don't have my wire cutters with me. Oh, do I? I'm gonna do. I lied, I do. Okay. So I'm gonna do. That might be too much. You don't really need anything really crazy here for pike lead, for uh, pike leader length, but here, that's roughly, we'll say, not quite a foot, maybe 10, 10 inches or so. I'm just gonna cut that off. Just like that. Boom. And it's really easy, really quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a loop knot, uh, a non-slip loop knot. So we're going to pull this over here. I'm gonna wrap this around like that. You can see that. And if you can't, then you might just have to look up how to do that. And if you'd like me to show you, I can do another video where I actually take like a good piece of string and do it. But we're just gonna basically do for, so this can actually be quick. Um, we're gonna go uh, non-slip loop knot, go around the loop right in here. Oh, come on. And then we're going to pull this loop through here, like so. And then you can see right there. Okay, now we just need to pull that tight. But the one thing that can happen sometimes is this is where where, where this is knottable wire. Um, you really gotta get it to cinch nicely or I've had it happen where it will come undone when you hook a fish, which sucks. I hooked a pretty big one and lost a fish that way. So all I do with this is I just take my pliers wet it a bit, pull it nice and tight. Just like that. Just like that. See, you can see that. That sucker is not going anywhere. Next, I'm just gonna cut that tip off. Boom, gone. Okay, so what are we gonna do on the other end? That's where these come into play. Mustad fast attached size two clips. They're black, so they're pretty much the same color as my line. Now this is 30 pound Rio wire line. <clears throat> All we're gonna do with this here now is, so this is the fast attached side. That's the side that clips to your fly. It's nice, you just take it and force it over. You don't need to use pliers, just take it and force it through the eye. It will clip, it'll be nice and tight. Um, I haven't lost a fish on it yet. I've heard people say that you could, uh, if you get a cheap one, but these are must add. They're not, 
exactly cheap and I haven't had too much. I haven't had any bad luck with them yet. So now here all we're gonna do, we're gonna take this, slide it through the eye. I'm gonna do a clinch knot. Nice and simple, really easy. I'm just gonna pop that through there. Once again, if you would like me to show you the clinch knot in a much more detailed video, then I will do so. Just drop a comment and drop a comment down below. So here we go. We got that. Just gonna do that. But uh, you don't have to really worry about snapping this. You're not gonna snap it. It might come undone, but you won't snap it. And now this one's the one you need to make sure. You need to make sure that's cinched all the way to the top or it will come undone. The water will hit it and a pike will bite it and it will come undone. So you can see there, it's nice and tight, looks good. And there you have it. You have a little six inch wire leader, which generally is more than enough for what you're gonna need. Even a big pike, if you're hooking it up, you should be somewhere in the mouth. If he really engulfs it, yeah, you might lose it. And all you do is for the loop-to-loop -loop connection for you to your leader, actually, better yet, I got a better idea. So here we go. Then all you gonna, all you need to do is, okay, so we have 25 pound fluorocarbon. Once again, you would have this tied to your line, your your uh, your fly line. I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna put a quick loop knot on here, just for demonstration purposes. Okay. So to connect it, nice and easy. This would be on your fly line, or like this, this end would be on your fly line. You're just gonna go through, put it through like that. And then just make sure you go over the hook, the, just make sure this is over here. So you can go like this and pull it tight, boom. I haven't lost a pike yet on this. I have not tightened that end enough and lost a pike. <laughs> but I haven't lost a pike on this yet and I've caught some decent sized pike on it. This works really well and this will work probably 85% of the time for pike and even walleye. They're generally not leader shy. However, if you get a moment where they are leader shy, just take this off this end here, put that through. I'm gonna keep that because I need another leader anyway. Shove it in here for when I break off or something or need one. And all I do, so when you get those moments, so oh, I'm about to die here. So anyway, we're gonna make this quick. So when you get those moments when the pike are really leader shy, you don't seem to be getting many hits and you know they're there, switch to just a, probably, maybe go 30 to 35. I use 25, which works pretty good for most of the time. As long as you're stripping pretty aggressively, it will generally always hook right in the mouth. They will engulf it and it will get, uh, uh, like you'll, you'll see it like it'll be frayed. Just clip it off. That's why I like to go like a foot and a half. Clip it off, retie, go again. You might be able to get one or two hook sets out of a good pike, but you will land more pike because they will they they will go out. They won't see this as much, and they will go after it. And they do get leader shot sometimes, whether people believe it or not. Um, I've had it happen, and I've switched and turned my whole day from a losing streak to just a absolute clinic but anyway i hope you guys like this if this is helpful give it a thumbs up drop a comment down below i'm gonna try and do some videos like this in between my bigger videos that i've been working on so that i have a little bit more time to do better production on my bigger videos 
Um, but I would like to help you guys out as well. So if there's any tips you guys are looking for, um, whether it's fly fishing, gear fishing, different types of setups, stuff like that, drop a comment down below and I will try and do a video in between my other ones to accommodate to try and also get videos out more steadily. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this and we will catch you guys on the next episode of Adventure Time Fishing and Hunting.